I think so. Joining us today, City Journal columnist, author of the book, When Race Trumps Merit, Heather McDonald. Heather, so great to have you with us today. Thank you. So the left has this, you know, playbook, identity politics, um, try to divide, use race. But how do you see this being used in a second Trump term when the American people have kind of just come forward and said, uh-uh, this is our guy. He's not a racist. Well, you're so right to set it up this way, Bianca. And in a, in a rational world, the left would say, whoops, this really failed. Uh, we have not managed to divide the country by race. But I think it's going to take them a very long time to get out of that mode, number one, because it is so ingrained in their worldview now. They are actually committed to the idea that American whites are perennially white supremacist and racist and misogynist and homophobic. And number two, they have nothing else. You know, they do not have a sane uh, economic policy. They do not have a sane energy policy. All they've got is this this claim of phantom racism that has brought down our criminal justice system. It's bringing down our scientific research establishment. Uh, it, it's bringing down any possibility of meritocracy. I hope that Trump absolutely goes on the very fast offensive, stands up for meritocracy and completely eviscerates the left wing lie that any mm -hmm. racial disparities are inherently proof of racism. And you're right. And you said in a rational world, in a sane world, I don't know if they have the capacity, but I have hope. And we're not the people also saying don't invite people to your holiday table who oppose you. I mean, that's just so wrong. Um, I want to play a little bit looking back how they love to call Trump Hitler. Um, and it did seem to blow up in their faces. Here is um, MSNBC, Claire McCaskill. So a lot of people have tried to draw similarities between Mussolini and Hitler and the use of the terminology like vermin and the, the, the drive that those men had towards autocracy and, and dictatorship. The difference, though, I think makes Donald Trump even more dangerous. <sighs> Mika and Joe went to see him um, on Friday, um, and, and Trump, I think, you know, very generous of him. I mean, he's he's choosing his cabinet. He's got a million things to do, and he makes time for the people who really were were smearing him, basically, effectively cheering for him to, uh, you know, his demise. Well, I would give credit to Biden too at that moment. I think Biden was also very gracious. It was not a big deal for Trump to go there, uh, but but let's say that both of them. Uh, upheld the best traditions of our mm -hmm. country. And the, the Trump fascist rhetoric, you know, we've got the media on record now. The New York Times for two months before the election were giving the same predictions over and over again that Trump was going to lead to sicking the military on his enemies, political uh, opponents or people who merely voted against him. This was a blatant lie, a deliberate misreading of Trump's I exchange uh, with Maria Bartoloma that was about what happens if there's riots. Yes, it is perfectly appropriate if local authorities do not put down riots to bring out the National Guard. Trump never said he was going to put uh, the National Guard against Democratic voters, but no. that was the claim. The media is on record now saying he's going to do that. They have a, uh, a scorecard that Americans should, should follow tick off, you know, the things that did not happen that they predicted would happen against Trump. And it should really be the final death blow for any remaining shred of credibility that the mainstream media has had, because they have been the most partisan. So